Hey, this is Glendon Cameron with day three of Design Your Life. Today's exercise is going to be a little scary. It might make you cry. It might piss you off. As long as there is a provocative response, you're on the right path. What I want you to do is to take stock of your life and write down, yes, write, write down, why you are where you are in your current life. What decisions, life path choices has helped ensure that you are where you are? Now, many people think of improving their lives by forgetting about the bad stuff, to accentuate the positive, to only focus on the positive. When you do not take stock of the why, the core issues, even if the accumulates of your life, that being the house, the car, all this stuff gets better at your core, you will still be rotten, rotten to the core. So with that, you have to deal with it. I want you to ask yourself, why are you where you are today? Some of these decisions could have been made a decade ago. Some of these decisions could have been as recent as this morning. But nevertheless, the decisions that you make are the reason that your life is the way that it is. When you get to that point and own it and understand it, you gain a lot of power that you can circle around and change your life and become the person that you want to be. The core of designing your life. Many people live a life of happenstance. This happened. They react. When you design your life, you deal with your life the way that it is, and then you clear that up and you start to be an architect and you build a life that you want. I realized when I was living in that boarding house on a cold night, it was December, there was no heat in that room. And it was just me and my thoughts. And I thought about all of the poor decisions I made. It was a long night. I made a decision to marry someone that wasn't a good one. And I kind of knew it in the beginning, but I went ahead with it thinking things would work out. Who you marry, who you partner with is a huge decision that can have ramifications that will affect you the rest of your life. I made that decision. She did not put a gun to my head. She did not make me. And even when I saw that maybe I should go another way, I still did it. That was my fault. The second decision, I thought that you could actually love someone into being someone better than they are. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. But when you go through all of those processes and you're being really honest a lot of things don't work out because we're not looking at them realistically. Because I ended up in that boarding house and I ended up homeless because I made, like I said, two pert relationship decisions. And the third decision was I never I didn't put any money away. I was at that point. I had no I had no money. I no, I had no resources. I had no money to the side. I didn't have any money. I had no way to avoid that situation because I was totally ass tapped out. So that's one of the reasons I always talk about resources and I talk about other forms of wealth. You know, your friends are a form of wealth. Your mental state is a form of wealth. Your health is a form of wealth. I didn't have that level of wealth. I had a few friends and my mom said they could come back home, but I said, I need to figure this out and figure it out. I did. So those three decisions are the reason that I ended up homeless. It was a strange day when I did an exceptional job and I still ended up getting laid off. But I was hurt. I was disappointed. But I wasn't pissed. Why? And I sit here and as I think about that, I'm like, why wasn't I like really pissed? Like I said, I was more disappointed and hurt. That day led to me thinking differently than I had ever thought before. It led me to coming up with a new thought pattern. 
essentially I expanded my thinking and I started to solve solution. I mean, to solve problems. About six months of this introspection is the reason that I'm the person before you today. I became a better man. I became a better person. I became a better father and I became a better mate to anyone that I love seriously from going through those processes. So in understanding that you have to deal with that stuff because if you don't have drive or you don't save money or if you don't work hard and you ended up in a certain spot in life, it kind of comes back to you. So during this task, write down all that stuff. Be brutally honest with yourself. And this is just a one time deal. We're not going to touch with this again. Just a simple fact of looking at it objectively, being bluntly honest and writing it out. Then once you write all this stuff out, if you have a shredder, shred it. If you don't have a shredder, take a match, burn it and you're done and make a promise that you will begin to make small daily steps to become better. Give you an example. If you are a person that only powers up to solve a bill, like say you have this extra bill and then you'll go work a part time job or you'll hustle extra hard. You like, you know what, I'm going to become that person to kind of hustle hard and do these things without some type of extant circumstances. And that way you'll build yourself a success fund and you will build your debt yourself a sunny day form, form a sunny day fund. Never say I'm saving for a rainy day. Because essentially, whenever you get to that point, wherever there's enough rain in your life, then that money will just disappear. But when you say I'm saving for a sunny day and it can be just five bucks a week, your money will stack up because you're saving yourself for opportunities and success. So that's the task. Write that stuff out. And when you're done, burn it and make a promise to yourself. All right. This is Glendon and I will see you on the good side.